The world is ending. There is no one left. Not your coworkers, your neighbors, even your family. Soon, you will find yourself facing the same deadly element that has killed everyone on Earth. And worst of all, you were directly responsible for making this happen. This is the story of John Pilgrim, the main protagonist of One Chance, a flash game created by Dean Moynihan. Released on December 2nd, 2010, the game was met with critical acclaim, with many praising the permanent consequences that the player makes throughout the game. In addition to the unchangeable aspect of the ending, there are also many other elements of the game that contribute to making One Chance, a game that will make you think deeply about your actions. The game is simple. As soon as you click play, you are notified that in six days, the world is going to be devoid of any life. You only have one chance. John Pilgrim is the leader of a team of scientists who have just discovered a cure to cancer. Named E48K15, the cure is used primarily by gas form, in which it is then distributed across the entire world. The cure is not only for cancer, however, as an excerpt from the newspaper notes that the cure is also effective for taking out the pathogens responsible for the common cold. At work, Pilgrim is greeted with excitement and praise for his efforts. Annie, a co-worker, invites Pilgrim to celebrate, and this is where the player's first choice is made. Do you party and celebrate the day away, or do you continue to work as planned? Pilgrim rejects this offer and continues his way into the laboratory, and the day passes by. John's morning is abrupt. His wife tells him that the phone has been ringing over and over again. Something's going on. The newspapers paint a dire situation developing. E48K15 is no cure. It's the exact opposite. Making his way to the office, it's evident that the reputation of the company has declined drastically. Employees are trying to ask John about the nature of the drug. Today, with everything going on, no work is going to be completed. And as a result, John makes his way to the roof of the building, perhaps to get fresh air. Surprisingly, he meets a fellow co-worker up there named Matthews. His attitude seems... off. Confident that there is no way to stop the deadly gas from taking out all forms of life, Matthew questions John about what other course of action is possible, before stepping onto the ledge and allowing gravity to take him straight to ground zero. As news of the world's impending doom settles in, John's wife Penny sees little reason for continuing. Their daughter Molly is confused on why school is no longer in session. As John prepares to leave for work, the newspaper perpetuates the same sentiments that his wife has. The end is nigh. Driving to work, there is a large protest, probably outrage directed towards the company that John works for. Stepping into the office brings the situation to life. There are very few, if any, employees who are here to carry on their duties. The laboratory door is locked, leaving only the roof accessible for John to visit yet again. There, he meets his boss, who after reassuring his sanity, encourages John to return home to spend the little time there's left with his family. However, before he can head home, Ryan, another employee, unlocks the doors to the laboratory and invites John to work, if he's interested in doing so. John agrees, and with the remaining employees, begin to research on anything that can stop their impending doom. John's morning is eerily quiet. Neither his wife nor daughter are interested in getting up. Outside, the newspapers state that by tomorrow morning, half of the world population will be gone. And before he's able to comprehend the magnitude of such news, he's interrupted by his remaining colleagues, who believe that they have a possible lead on stopping the deadly poison coming for them. At this, John makes a decision to head off to work once again. There, he's asked if he's willing to abandon the effort and run off with Annie. 
but he elects to remain. And as the day passes on, the team continues to research, turning up nothing. That night, returning home, John discovers a grisly sight in the bathroom as his wife decided to prematurely accept her fate in his absence at work. Molly does not know where her mother is, but there's no way that John is going to let her know the truth. Even if the world's ending, who would want a kid to know that their parent left them behind forever? Taking Molly with him, John drives towards a destination. Choosing to go to work, there is no activity there when he arrives. The corridor is strewn with the corpses of the same employees who he had worked with just a day ago. John Pilgrim is the last employee alive. Opting to research once more, Molly waits as John continues testing to no avail. Now, the effects of the poison has reached both Molly and John. Severely weakened, John manages to carry Molly to the car for one last drive. Leaving their home, John nonetheless still is determined to visit his place of work. Leaving Molly at the door, he continues his way to the laboratory. During John's final bout of research, he discovers something different, a cure. This time, his test registers positive, and after trying the anti-cure, John finds out he is fully healthy once again. He rushes out to administer the life-saving serum to his daughter, and after doing so, the two are seen relaxing at the park. Regardless of what the previous days had indicated, John had pushed on and made a breakthrough, quite literally, at the last minute. But despite this victory, one must ask if this is a Pyrrhic victory. At the very least, however, John Pilgrim had one chance, and he used it wisely. And this is where the title One Chance comes into play, because if you return to the game, you will be greeted by the ending that you earned and nothing else. There is no option to reset and play the game again. The choices that you made in your playthrough are permanent. Now, this ending isn't the only ending of this game, as there are a number of other endings that players can get based on the choices they make throughout the entire week. However, if you've never played this game before, I don't want to spoil anything, so I highly encourage you to go and play this game right now. If you don't think you'll have time, don't worry. The entire game can be played in about 15 minutes. For many, including myself, the addition of the permadeath mechanic in this game was a feature that up until this point had really never been seen before. Compounding this unique aspect, the visual aesthetics of the game were extremely simple, merging perfectly with the easy controls. It's very interesting to see that the game was able to conjure up the feeling of absolute despair through context clues and world building. For a 15 minute experience, I thoroughly enjoyed playing through and seeing how each day would turn out. One aspect of the game that made the world come to life for me was that as the days were passing, you could see how all of the life around John slowly diminishes, such as the apple tree in the front of his home, which slowly loses fruit and subsequently its life over the course of the week, to the hustle and bustle of the city he drives through to get to work, disappearing at the midpoint. It's small details like this that add to the overall atmosphere that the game reminds you about at the start of each day. Contrasting this brilliantly is the ending that I got, in which you can see the foliage and trees are back to life. You also can't forget the haunting music that repeats throughout the entire game, only changing and stopping once during Friday night. Another reason why I think that this game is more impactful now that I'm older than when I first played the game is that we all have witnessed the effects of what a pandemic can do to the entire world and having that knowledge and experience in the back of your head as you play through this game makes it more meaningful. So now you know the tragic narrative of one chance, 
a story that tests the willingness for humanity to continue even when faced with absolute annihilation. The simple nature of the game in terms of audio, visual, and gameplay is recognizable anywhere, making this game an internet classic. Furthermore, the decisions that you make each day are permanent, forcing you to commit John Pilgrim onto a path, and whether or not any good can come from that path is entirely up to you. After all, you only have one chance.